This is Shuffle, your backstage pass to Northeast Ohio's independent music scene. I'm Amanda Rabinowitz. My guest this week is Michael McFarland of the Cleveland indie rock duo Messmaker. They have a big sound, a DIY intricate stage light show, and have been experimenting with collaborations that have helped to grow their audience. Seven o'clock, nobody's coming over, doors are all locked, but I remember how this house once shook with voices. I loved how Michael started out by talking about how he first started songwriting as a teenager. I grew up in Kent. We had about a half acre, so you know it was a good hour and a half to to mow that. So I was just going in circles on the on the riding lawnmower. My music listening device, the batteries on it died. I started hearing this melody in my head, and I realized I don't think I know this song. Am I am I writing a song right now? I think I'm writing a song right now. The first time that I performed in public at an open mic at Brady's Cafe in Kent. Several people asked who wrote that song. (laughs) That seemed like a good sign to me. So that was kind of how my songwriting journey started. So you've been in quite a few bands over the years coming up. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So there were there were really two big ones that uh, that I was in for an extended period of time. So the band that I was in in high school, um, we were called Conduit Four. Changed our name to Sneak Thief right before we split up. And then I was in a band called Aviatic. We were together for about seven years. After that, I moved to Asheville, North Carolina for three years and started a solo project just under my own name, Michael McFarland. And then I moved to Cleveland, bought a crazy old Victorian house. My friend Freya moved in with me. She and I had played some music together before I moved to North Carolina. I asked Freya, who'd occasionally been playing bass for um, and a backing band for my solo project, if she'd be down to play drums with me on a new project, and we called it Messmaker, and we've been doing that for about three years now. Talk about this approach to making this a duo as okay. opposed to bringing in other artists and making it a full band. There are a decent number of bands out there that pull off the two-piece thing pretty well. A few of them from Ohio yeah. um, would be remiss not to mention, you know, Black Keys and, and 21 Pilots uh, mm-hmm. have blazed the trail a bit on that front. And we started looking at, okay, how do modern bands that are out there touring, how do they approach things? And I noticed more and more that there are bands that there was clearly bass in the mix and on the record, but there was no bass player on stage that they were using backing tracks for that. If we're writing and performing everything in in the studio, we could use backing tracks live on stage. We already played the parts. Then the things that are really going to connect with the audience as far as performance goes, the lead vocals, the guitars, and of course the live drums, those will do live on stage. Licking logs, Lego blocks, cardboard tubes rewind the clocks, skyscrapers reach into the heavens, ticket tours, rector sets, stacks of boxes. I know you have a design background getting a degree from Kent State University and you've worked a lot with Ingenuity Cleveland building interactive art installations, and you've used your design background to then build a DIY light show that accompanies your performance. They always say, you know, dress for the job you want, not the job you have, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we want to be playing to stadiums, why not dress like we're playing to stadiums? And that's putting together a full production show with lights, with, you know, with all of those elements. The one thing that we had to try to figure out was, okay, we don't have a van yet, so stadium show that fits in a hatchback. The entire dining room at the house got taken over with strands of LED strips and you know soldering irons and wire and all this. We came out at our, at our very first show as Messmaker with a full light show behind us that was synced up to the music and we've been doing that ever since. We have a van now. Um, <laughs> but for the first year that we were playing out, we were traveling around in a little... Toyota hatchback, just the two of us and all of our gear in the back. 
with a full light show. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, from the from the beginning, we we knew that the music had to be good. Like before anything, the music the music has to be good. If you if you've got all the flash and and you know all the shiny things on stage, and people don't walk away with the song stuck in your head, then you've missed the mark. Well, that's a great segue to talk about the music. Listening to your music, every song is like an anthem. And you find yourself going, I know this song already. <laughs> it just gets stuck with you right away. So can you talk about your songwriting process? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's, you know, it's great that you mentioned the word anthem because uh, we describe our music as anthemic indie rock. We wanted to write big songs that people are going to want to sing along with, that people are going to be able to embrace as their own. Usually it starts with a concept, a title. Before any of the music, before most of the lyrics, there's a title of a song. Then working backwards from that point, I went to school for, um, for visual communication design. I am a designer by trade, and I kind of approach songwriting in that same way. One of our songs is called We Are the Architects, and so it's this big anthem about holding on to the creativity that we're all born with. So like, okay, this is where we're ending up. Usually that title ends up being the last line of the chorus. I know in 2022, the National Songwriters Association named you one to watch. Yes, yes. That's quite an honor. So I work with, um, with writers and musicians in Nashville a lot. That all came out of the pandemic. There's this guy named Stephen Charles. He's originally from Pittsburgh. He played in a phenomenal pop rock band called Music From Another Room in the early 2010s. We had met at a uh, singer-songwriter conference in Cape May, New Jersey. When the world shut down, he had moved to Nashville like a year before that. Steve reached out to me and asked, hey, you know, we don't have anything else to do. Would you want to jump on a Zoom call and, you know, try co-writing over that? That was the start of a really, what's been a really amazing creative partnership because if you look at the writing credits on most of Messmaker's songs, probably a good two-thirds of them, you'll see Stephen Charles's name uh, as one of the co-writers. As part of that process, he encouraged me to, uh, to join the Nashville Songwriters Association. What a great way to expand your palette and reach to Nashville. I think that's very cool. This has been a very busy year for Messmaker. Yes, yes it has. You released an album called The Pulse. Mm-hmm. There's a song on there that has nearly 35,000 streams on Spotify called Hard Act to Follow. You wanna leave me, baby, that's fine. Think that it's easy, but baby, you're fine. I'm a high- so that is a song that I wrote with my friend George Chase. He is lead singer of a band called The Sublets. He plays bass in one of our best friend bands who are called Pretty Pretty Awful. He also hosts a web show called Happy Hour Sessions based on a random prompt with a limited amount of time with cameras on you. He writes a song with the guest that he has on for that episode. And so Hard Act to Follow is a song that you can go on YouTube, you can find the entire writing process of that in like a, you know, it's in a 15 minute video. I had no idea that that's how the song came to be. Yeah. Everything is about streaming, obviously, and just looking at some of your numbers on Spotify, the band's kind of catching on. A lot of that I have to attribute to the collaborations that we've done with other acts. We're friends with all these musicians. Why not write songs with them? And then when we play shows with them, 
they can jump up on stage with us. And I'm a very community oriented kind of person. And growing up in the music scene in Northeast Ohio, it was not a collaborative scene. All the bands sort of looked at it as a zero sum game. It was all battles of the bands and sell more tickets than the other guy so you can get the better opening spot. That's not the way to build a music community or a thriving music scene. So why not be the change? That has unexpectedly led to some really cool overlapping streaming numbers and, you know, fan bases that start out as Venn diagrams and end up as circles. And actually, I've, uh, I've seen this a lot in the, in the hip-hop community, is those kinds of collaborations and building each other up. You are really good at segues. Did you know that, Michael? <laughs> I love this project that you just released. It's called Is That Your Mixtape? Mm-hmm. And it's a collaboration with area hip-hop artists. Yeah. Let's make it. True Big the very first song that we wrote and recorded off of that was with our friend Jewel Big Green. It's a song called Scared Anymore. Young and dumb and naive To take a leap of faith But the ground buckled underneath Nineteen and speechless Stuck in the show For years I knew a spell I felt alone with no one to tell Until the night it got to me Properly shook my philosophy That one sort of sat on a shelf for a while Because it was a little bit different Than the other things we'd put out And we didn't know How it was going to fit into our live set And then... I met this guy named Alan, uh, who went by Mighty Misk. He was like, hey, if you ever want to collaborate on anything, let me know. And I was like, ooh, actually, we just put out this song that I think your style would work really well in an alternate version of that. And we put out the song Kick Drum Victim that has Mighty Misk on um, as the featured artist. Such and a great song. Thank you. That was the one immediately I was like, oh, I really like this one. with your static sound Gonna be a kick drum victim Kick drum, kick drum, kick drum victim Skip stabbing knives, dropping bombs and shooting guns Six million ways to die, choose drums Big sticks hit like a blacksmith's hammer drop Litmus test, you turning down or you stand to rock Once we hit that, it was like, oh, there's something really cool that happens when we bring these other flavors in and mix them into, you know, into our recipe. Why not do more of this? We started reaching out to hip hop artists that we were friends with already, ones that we didn't know that well. Toby Raps is an incredibly skilled lyricist and has amazing energy. Like something, something feels like, feels like something supernatural. The beat breaks, the ground quakes, the sky opens. The MC is on stage, a great omen. Speaking in tongues amongst the beat of the drums. The crowd screams and goes nuts and throws their hands up. It's a seance. The MC thrives on chaos. The undead flock to the stage from the graveyard. The shape shift is the- up. He was an 11th hour addition to it. In 24 hours, he turned around a verse to add to, uh, to the song Get Down. Get up, looking out my window, see a world that's on fire, realize it's not that simple. How do I afford to live while unlocking my potential? Fully, I grab a pencil and bully, buckle up and get suspenseful. I got dreams, it's got about demons locked in the vault. How do we stop? Why do I think when relationships sink, it's never my fault? And our friend Madstar, he's got this real relaxed flow to the way that he raps. And so we're like, we've got this down-tempo song that he would fit perfectly on. And so so he absolutely killed it on More Than You Believe You Are. You're more than you believe you are. Yeah. Our 
fairy tales are clearly failing the naive It went from dear mother goose to dearest nearly trying to breathe Like read the news or write not Cause see them nooses tight and squeeze See that's why all my idols died They all surviving on our screens Got pot bleeding in emergency I'm deep sleep in the nursery The song with Denari Komet who I'm very familiar with just because he has such a, a presence in the scene. But wow, his verse in that song is amazing. Yeah. He, I'm like, what a talent. He is, he's astoundingly talented on so many different fronts. You know, he, he started out in the metal scene. You know, he's an amazing guitarist, amazing vocalist, incredible writer and rapper. If you're thinking it's a game to us, best believe, best believe that we're dangerous. Yeah, get out the way. You made a mistake when you counted me out. I'm making waves, nobody is safe, so you better pray that you're not getting drowned. Been going for a while. Yeah, it's been a minute. Now I'm ending the drop when I'm back up in it. I'm making the method you gotta witness. Why you chasing the ground when you can't defend it? Let's be honest, you wasn't ready for this. I got everything that I set out to get. When you were complaining and shifting the blame, I gave the world something they'll never forget. But look, it isn't too late. You could turn it around and be something great. You could pair yourself to everyone else. Just want to keep you in the same place Society said that we had to be enemies Feeding into the divide We're stronger together and climbing The pressure can ride every cat that's alive So open your eyes Get ready to fight There's plenty of battles ahead But tonight we'll survive When we rise up like a new sun For the release party We had Janari Komet, Jewel Big Green And Mad Star do opening sets And then all of the, the featured artists except for our friend Mighty Misk, who passed away earlier this year. They joined us on stage to perform those songs with us. This has been a real pleasure. I've been following Mess Maker for a while, and it's so great to see the band doing such cool things. Yeah, it's it's been an exciting journey, and we can't wait to see uh, see where it goes from here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. That's Michael McFarland of Messmaker. You can find photos, links, and a fantastic article on this episode written by Shuffle producer Brittany Nader at ideastream.org slash shuffle. We're open to feedback and guest ideas. Email us at shuffle at ideastream.org or find WKSU's Shuffle on Facebook. I'm Amanda Rabinowitz. Thanks for listening. We are the march of progression and choice. We are the signal we're cutting your noise. Cause our souls are like an amplifier. Nerves, this is like a